So, in order to solve an absolute value equation, so it's a little bit different than we were doing before when we were just able to say that number is 3. So now we have to do a little bit setting up. The first thing that we have to do is isolate the absolute value expression. And what that means is I want to get whatever is inside the absolute value that needs to be by itself on the same side of the equal sign. Right? Okay? And then what we have to do is we're going to set whatever is inside my absolute value sign, we're going to set to the positive and to the negative. We're going to set it equal to. So in this case, the only thing that's inside my absolute value sign is x. So I have x equals 2, because I'm going to set it equal to whatever this is. And I'm also going to set it equal to the opposite of this, so negative. <coughs> Is x already solved for the x? Yes. Yeah. If it wasn't, we would have to solve both equations. Don't worry about this last part because we're not going to do it like that. So, number two, what's inside my absolute value? M. So, I'm going to set it equal to m equals 14 and m equals negative 14. Alright, so number 3, is my absolute value by itself? Ooh, it is. Right? The absolute value is by itself, right? The variable is not, but the absolute value is. Right? So I'm going to take what's inside my absolute value, and I'm going to go 5z equals 40. And then I'm also going to take what's inside there, 5z equals negative 40. Now I can solve both equations. And how am I going to solve them? Divide by 5, z equals 8. Divide by 5, z equals negative 8. All right, number four, is my absolute value by itself? It is. So I can make two equations. Negative <coughs> 70 equals 28 and negative 70 equals negative 28. So divide A equals what? Negative 4 and A equals We've got a negative divided by a negative in that one. Alright, so now what's inside my absolute value sign? B plus 1. So we're going B plus 1 equals 8, and B plus 1 equals negative 8. So notice how these both, these equations both stay the same, right? Didn't change any signs or anything? Just at the end. All right, so now I add my 1. B equals 13. Oh, yep, this one. I didn't get the same thing. So I minus 1. B equals 7. I minus 1. B equals negative 9. Okay, be careful with that because very rarely will your answers be the same. Negative 2 and 2. And most often, your answers are going to be two completely different numbers, like 7 and negative 9. <coughs> Alright, so let's jump to number 7. Let's set this up. What are my two equations? 4n plus 2 equals 34. What's my other one? 4n plus 2 equals negative 34. You must write out both of these equations. I know some of you are like, I, I don't really want to. I'm going to try to take a shortcut, but I want to see both of those equations, okay? Then we're going to subtract our 2. 4n equals 32. Divide by 4. 
n equals 8. And then the same thing over here. Subtract 2. 4n equals negative 36. n equals negative 9. So far, so good? Alright. So, on that next page, <coughs> sometimes you're going to get it where the absolute value isn't isolated. So, in number 9, is the absolute value by itself? No. So, I have to do some work to that before I can write my two equations. Yeah. So, we're going to get rid of that 2. We're going to subtract 2. We're going to get the absolute value of C equals 10. Now, is anything on the same side of my absolute value? No. So now I can write my two equations. So now C equals 10 and C equals negative 10. So we're going to have both of those. So, if we look at 12, what do I have to get rid of in number 12? The negative 2, because that's not inside my absolute value. So, what am I going to do? We're going to divide by negative 2. So, we have the absolute value of z plus 3 equals... Positive 7, because the negative divided by negative is going to give us a positive. Now what am I going to do? Oh, what am I going to do first? <coughs> so I'm going to write two equations, right? Z plus 3 equals 7. Z plus 3 equals negative 7. So Z equals 4. Z equals negative ten. All right. Let's look at number fourteen. What would I do first in fourteen? Alright, so think of this, think of your absolute value as one variable. So think of it that is just like an x, what I have circled right there. If I had negative 10x minus 3 equals negative 83, what would you do first? You'd add 3. So that's what we're going to do first. Because you have to think of that absolute value is what we're trying to get by itself. Alright? So we're going to add 3. We have negative 10 times the absolute value of h plus 5 equals negative 80. So after I got rid of this 3, now it looks like that. So now what would you do? Now I'm going to divide by negative 10. I have the absolute value of h plus 5 equals 8. And then what? Oh, h plus 5 equals 8. First, first we have to write it regular. Okay? Remember how I said you have to write it twice? This? With your absolute value signs, do not count as writing it once. Right? So you have to write it as h plus 5 equals 8, and h plus 5 equals <coughs> negative 8. Mm -hmm. um, before we write it with like, the absolute value sign, give yourself a question. <laughs> think of it. Make sure you ask it when you think of it, okay? So now what? Subtract 5. h equals. 3, subtract 5, h equals negative 13. Alright, so we better look at 16. What's 
first. All right, so how am I going to move it? Add 24. So 3 halves times the absolute value of 4R minus 4 equals 3. Now what? Divide by 3 halves. So that means we have 3 over 1 times 2 over 3. Because we have to take the reciprocal. Alright, so now I have the absolute value of 4V minus 4 wow. equals. Is that an R? Yeah. I can't even read that in handwriting. 4R minus 4 equals. Uh, 2. So we get 6 over 3 is 2. Now what am I doing? <laughs> Rewriting it with how many equations? 2 equations. So 4R minus 4 equals 2 and four r minus 4 good equals negative 2. So first step to solve this, add 4, 4, r equals 6, divide by 4, remember we're keeping these in fractions, 12 but lowest terms, 3 over 2, because we can divide them both by 2, over here, adding our 4, 4R four equals 2, divide by 4R equals 1 half. Okay. A couple things we just need to talk about before I let you work. If I have the absolute value of F, equals negative 3. When I'm talking about absolute value, what am I talking about again? The distance. So what number could I plug in there so that my distance is negative 3? Alright, just tell me this. If I plug in, what's the absolute value of a positive 3? 3. What's the absolute value of a negative 3? So, no matter what I plug in there, am I ever going to get negative 3 out? So, what would I write? No solution. Or you can go to 0 with the slash through it. NS is not an abbreviation for no solution. If you write NS, I have no idea what you are talking about. Comprende? All right, absolute value has to be positive. 